<clears throat> Welcome. In this session, we'll learn how to write transfer function in MATLAB and how you load different responses of that transfer function or the system of this transfer. So before I switch to MATLAB, let me illustrate first what we mean by transfer function. We know transfer function. We say in Laplace transform, something H of S. So if the input the Laplace transform of output, we take H of S is the value of S, X of S. And we say H of S is the system actually. So H of S represents so it is the system. How? Because if X of S is equal to one, then Y of S system function are simply the transfer function of this system. Now let me take an example of one, you know, one transfer function S. Let's suppose the transfer function is plus five S plus one divided by S square plus twice S plus three. So this is our transfer function. Now, how do we write this transfer function in MATLAB? Now we can write this transfer function in MATLAB by using a comma MATLAB inbuilt function, that's TF. TF stands for transfer function. Then we can write this two ways. Either we can mention the these coefficients of these numerator and denominator directly in these square braces like this, two, five and one, and one, and three. These are the options of numerator. These are the options of denominator. And to hit enter, this will give us a transfer function. This on, we can first store these coefficients in two arrays. Let's suppose we store the numerator in A, B, and A, and we store the denominator in B. Let's suppose one, two, and three. Then we can type it like this: transfer function A comma B. Again, hit enter, this will give us the same transfer function. So let's see how do we do this in MATLAB. How do we write this in MATLAB? So let me switch to MATLAB now. All right, so let's name this transfer function as system and in SYS in short. And let me write the coefficients two, five, and one are the coefficients of numerator. And denominator has coefficients one, two, and three. Then closing the braces, hit enter. This will give us the transfer function. So this is our transfer function. Now again, I can do the same step like this. First storing the coefficients in the arrays like A and B. And storing the denominator in B. Then we can say, let me call it SYS1. This system is as well as one. Let's see whether these two systems are one and the same. But TF A comma B, the arguments of this TF are A comma B mean is the coefficients of numerator and denominator. So this is how we enter the transfer function in MATLAB. So either you can directly specify the coefficients in these square braces, or you can first store these coefficients in A and B array and then write in TF with arguments a comma b, this will give us a transfer function. All right, so this is how we write transfer function in MATLAB. Let's do some more examples. Let's suppose system two, in the transfer function. Let me, let's suppose the transfer function is like this. Nine, seven, five, six. So this is our transfer function of the system two now. Another example of this transfer function is one comma, comma zero. Now this is the transfer function of a capacitor where C is equal to one. This is the transfer function of a capacitor where C is equal to one. This is how we write transfer. You can mention the value of the capacitance also. Let's suppose two. We know the transfer function of the impedance of capacitor is one by Cs. So if C is two, this is S, so this will be one by Cs. So this is the transfer function of the That's how we write this. Next is, if we have to find any response of this 
a system means if I have, if the system is given system is given now if, i hope it's clear system is given means the transfer function is given so if the transfer function of the system is given to us how do you calculate different response like step response impulse response of this system how do you calculate different plots like body plot root harvest plot root locus plot nyquist plot pool zero configuration of this means what is the pool and what are the different pools and zeros of this for this let's start with a simple example let's take an example of i hope how to create an transfer function in matlab is clear let's take an example of a system let's suppose the system is system is five should be small basis first one twenty four you take ten column of five so this is our trans okay I didn't have the comma so this is our transfer function now how what is the step response of this system to get the step response of this system or this transfer function just type step and name of this transfer function what is the name sys1 and hit enter this will give us the step response of this system whose transfer function is this after you hit the enter this will plot that that may not be visible first let me type grid on then let me switch to the figure window that so that you can see the, this is the step response of this system so this is the step response of this system all right so to uh, get the step response just type step this will give you the step response same way you can type the impulse name of this transfer function this will give you the impulse response of the system so just type the impulse and it will start to feed on also before i switch to the figure window so you can see this is the impulse response of this system so just typing impulse in back in back name of the transfer function or the name of the system this will give you the impulse response of that system so this is how we calculate step and impulse response of this system now to illustrate it better let's take the example of a capacitor let's suppose we calculate the transfer function of a capacitor so this this is the transfer function of a capacitor now if i apply step as input to this capacitor or this system whose transfer function is 1 by s what should happen this should start charging now so the, what should happen to the capacitor if you apply a step as input to this this capacitor and this should start charging so to do that let me, what i am going to do i am going to type step and i am going to do a step and name of this transfer function is 2 and i am going to check the response of time t equal 10 now this simply in for matlab i am going to check the time and this response only up to time t equal 10 that's all that's why this 10 mention is there this is to check the response up to time t equal 10 all right so let me enter this so if i enter it on now let me switch to the figure window you can see as t increases the amplitude also increases this is to the capacitor starts charging as t increases capacitor voltage also increases so the step output mean is the step response of this system or the capacitor is simply the voltage increases linearly because this capacitor will simply charge as you apply a step as input to the capacitor all right so this is how we calculate step response same way what will be the impulse response of a capacitor if you apply input as impulse to a capacitor so if the input uh, to the capacitor is the impulse let me to illustrate this let me switch to the different window now if the input to a capacitor whose transfer function is 1 by s let me do this this so if i say my system this system is simply a capacitor transfer function 1 by s now in my input is delta t now what's the laplace transform of delta t is 1 so what will be the output t y of x of the system is multiplied by 1 by s by s so what will be the transform 
y of one this y of s that will be simple we know the laplace transform of s so you know laplace transform this is simply u of t so if you apply impulse as input to the system the input to the system is impulse then the output simply is this is true you know if you remember the tr transfer function in this is simply the one by s is the transfer function of an integrator. So you can say a capacitor is also an integrator and we just saw from the step response that capacitor actually charges, means it's integrating the input voltage. Integrating the input voltage means it's adding the input voltage. Our input voltage was step, so it was adding those step values as the time increases. Now, if the input is impulse, so this is an integrator. If the input is an integration of delta t is step, we know that integration of delta t, sorry, this delta from the signal system. Yes. So the output should be, if I say impulse response of this capacitor should give me a step response. Let me switch to MATLAB to illustrate this. So this is my integrator or capacitor. A capacitor is also an integrator. Or this is the transfer function of integrator. Now if I type impulse, I should get a step response. I should get a step response. Now to illustrate to see this, let me switch to the figure window. Now you can check the value is one. It shows the value is one, means this is a step. This is indeed a step. It is starting from zero and it, inc it increases as time. The value is constant, it is equal to one. The value is constant and is equal to one. So the step response of an integrator or a capacitor is sorry impulse response of a capacitor is step unit step all right you i hope you know this thing from signal systems theory class so this is how we calculate step response and impulse response of the system let's take a few more examples let's suppose we have a transfer function that's defined like this 25 and let's suppose one and 25. So this is our transfer function. If I type step response, step three. So this will give me the step response. So to illustrate this, let me switch to the figure window. You can check this is indeed the step response of this system whose transfer function is given as. So this is the step response of this system this is how we check the step response same way you can type impulse means this will give you the impulse response of this system and let me switch to the you can check the impulse responses yeah, so this is our impulse response all right so this is how we calculate step and impulse response of this system that way the one. next what we are going to do we are going to learn how do you see the poles what are the different poles and zeros of this system are the transfer function simply so to calculate that let me clear the screen let's suppose we define a system and first let me have the transfer function suppose the function of one and Right. Let's suppose this is our transfer function. Now, how do you calculate the poles and zeros of this transfer function? For this, MATLAB has an inbuilt com function, uh, function that's PZ map, means pole zero map of this system. So, name of the system is SYS4. Then, this will give me the poles and zeros of this transfer function. Let me type read on also so that the visualization becomes better. You can check this is the these are the poles and zeros. This is one pole is here. And this also tells you the other information. What is the damping ratio? What is the overshoot at this pole? What is, and this also informs you the other information. So the frequency is 2.2 over it's all right. So this is the zero is at minus 2.9. Another zero is at here, means minus 0.219. So this is another zero of this system. Now the pole of this system is here one minus 1.5 plus 1.66 i so this is pole of this system another pole is here 
so this is another pool of the system and another zero is here obviously this is a and this has the degree of numerator is two and the degree of denominator is two also two so number of zeros is two number of poles is two so this is how we calculate poles and zeros of a uh, transfer function in MATLAB. just typing pz map this will give you the poles and zeros let me take one more example before i proceed let's suppose this is one three five and let's suppose this is one two and three so if i say system then i can say pz map and then type in six five if you now, if you do not type this grid on, it won't show you the values. Just that thing will happen. Let me do it without typing the grid on this time. Let me switch to here. You can see one zero is here, another zero is here, another one pole is here, another pole is here. So this is how you compute the poles and zeros of a system in MATLAB. Now next, what we are going to do, we are going to see, first we saw, the pull in the step response and impulse response of the system how do you calculate that uh, and next we saw how do you take the calculate the poles and zeros just typing pz map this will give you the poles and zeros of this system so this is how we calculate poles and zeros of this transfer next week what we are going to do we are going to see how do you calculate the body plot of this transfer so if i say system one is this now the what's the body plot of this now before i switch to this system let me give one more example let's take the example of a capacitor so let's take the example of a capacitor so if i say body bod just typing body and name of the system is six so this is body six this will give me the body plot of this and grid on this will give me the body plot now remember body plot has two plots one is the magnitude plot another is the phase plot you can see there are two plots here one is the magnitude plot and it's in db and this is the phase plot and we know capacitor has a phase shift of minus 90 degree you know that from control theory so this is the magnitude plot this is the phase plot so this is how we take the body plot how we compute the body in matlab same way you can say body of system one to illustrate this let me switch to the figure window so this is the body plot of this uh, on this transfer function so body and magnitude plot and phase plot next what we are going to see how do you take the root locus or the nicest plot first let me show you the nicest plot of this uh, nicest, nicest plot of this. so let's plot system one this will give us the nicest plot so they're typing next and the name of this uh, transfer function or system will give it nicest plot now let me switch to the figure window you can see this is the nicest plot if you remember the nicest plot this is the nicest plot of this transfer function or system now same way you can take the root locus of this transfer function for that you can say r l o c u x so root locus of this transfer function our system this will give us the root locus and let me switch to the this this is the root locus of this system so this is the root locus of this system now let me give one few more example for this root locus and next plot so that you remember this clear the second transfer function let's take this simple example one and nine seven five let's take this simple example so if i say r locus will give me the root locus of this system you can check the root locus this is the root locus of this this has three branches one two and three this has three branches starts at the pole and ends at the zero you know the theory from control theory all right so same way we can see the uh, next plot of this 
so next plot of this will be data access on Galileo give me the Nyquist plot and you can check the Nyquist plot looks like this so this is the Nyquist plot of this system all right so this is how you write the transfer function in s domain and how you calculate the roots how you take the root locus plot of that how you compute the body plot how you compute the Nyquist plot and how you can compute the step and impulse response of that system so i hope this is clear please practice at home this will uh, this is let's stop here in the next session we'll do the transfer function in z domain how do you write the transfer function in z domain let me stop here